that uh, as the woman who was treating acupuncture, treating you with acupuncture, you remembered certain details and you just picked up on it instinctively and intuitively. And not knowing the mechanism behind what was being done, you just applied it and somehow you hit all the right points. But uh, like I said, don't jump to conclusions. Oftentimes, uh, maybe certain things have happened, but it needs to be constantly experimented with and repeated in order to verify whether uh, the, whether it was really having an impact because of your technical expertise or whether it was just a placebo. So one problem with people who claim to be highly intuitive, you see these are two separate things. You have a person who is highly intuitive, but you also have a person who is a very imaginative person. And unless you have refined your intellect in such a way that you can make the distinction between the two, between what are projections of imagination and what, is our, what are genuine intuitive experiences, what standards will you have within yourself to make this discrimination? It's just going to be a confused mess, a mixture of sometimes maybe a mixture, uh, some delusion is there, maybe sometimes something genuine is there, but you don't have any guiding light within yourself to make this distinction. So sometimes this is what happens. People who claim to be highly imagin imaginative, what they will do is certain things will happen and they have certain expectations in these situations. Okay, I want these, uh, these events to happen. And when they happen, they're remembering all the hits, but they're forgetting all the misses. How many times has it happened that you thought, okay, this is going to happen, maybe my grandmother is going to call me on the phone, and she didn't call. But you are not playing this game of selective memory. This is a game of selective memory. You remember all the hits, you neglect all the misses, and because you, want, you have a confirmation bias, you want to confirm certain beliefs that you have within yourself, you say, ah, yes, I knew it. I knew this was going to happen. So how, how many times does it happen with people who win the lottery, for example? Sometimes people who win the lottery, they are interviewed and they say, you know what, I knew today. I had a feeling. I had a feeling today that I was going to win. But just apply the interview and interview all the other individuals. How many of them have said, may, have, may be saying exactly the same thing? Oh, I had a feeling that I was going to win. So um, this game of selected memory can be uh, very tricky. So you must become conscious. You must refine your intellect in such a way that you're not quick to jump to conclusions, knowing so well how this delicate mind, which is so multidimensional, right? So multidimensional. How many things is your mind capable of? Your mind is capable of clarity, but equally capable is just the, the exact opposite. It's capable of a lot of self-deception, right? Your mind is capable of wisdom, yet it's also capable of the worst forms of ignorance, right? You're capable of compassion, you're also capable of violence. This multi-dimensional mind, which has a whole spectrum of colors, if you want to handle this mechanism well, you must develop this more refined sensitivity of intellect. But that's, of course, just a starting point. This is, we've talked so much about this in the past. Viveka. You remember Viveka? Yes. The, con the training of your intellect, just like how you train a physical muscle, right? You continue training it and training it. Maybe it needs a little bit of repetition. A little bit of reinforcement but after a while the force of that muscle becomes automatic same thing with this refinement of intellect to be able to constantly make this distinction between the real and the unreal between delusions of the mind and things which are more grounded in reality and there's a whole yoga that's based on this right nana yoga Yes, the yoga of knowledge and it's designed for those sort of individuals who are who are more inclined towards intellect so they thought okay how can you use your intellect in a very specific way 
because intellect can lead you in so many wrong directions also right we see evidence of this uh, with sophists remember the sophists yeah so um, they're highly skilled in rhetoric and the art of logic if they approach it as an art they can bend any argument and give a clear reasoning why this argument is true and if they wanted to they could do precisely the opposite how many times has it happened amongst mathematicians that they have mathematical equations on the paper which work just fine if you follow the reasoning step by step it's almost perfect reasoning yet when it is when the mathematicians give this work to the hands of the experimentalists they find uh, conclusions which are exactly the opposite that these equations are just the ramblings of a very clever intellect but without anything to do with with what is real in nature right that's true yeah that's why i thought my math class math course one time if i had a good answer it would make sense to my intellect and it was wrong <laughs> Well, the thing with mathematics is, is that it's just it's it's a matter of pure logic. If you gave that to a mathematician, he may be able to look at it and say, "Yes, this math this mathematics is correct." You give it to any brilliant mathematician, he'll say, "Yes, these steps are correct." But this doesn't have any relevance at all to do with what is actually there in nature. So your intellect can be guided; it can be misguided. So in Nana Yoga, we want you to use your intellect in a way which is not misguided. So there's a strategy for that, and that is to discriminate between that which is real, meaning what, is, what does that specifically mean, that which is real? It means that which remains unchanged. Right? Mm -hmm. Today it is, uh, in the past it is, today it is, in the future it is. Mm -hmm. It's an unbroken undercurrent that is what we are defining as real and what is unreal is just that which does not last which is impermanent so what is that truth in you which can be said to be real that which is beyond all impermanence well let's not give it names that's just we can cl we can clarify it by understanding what it is not but basically what happens is, as you train your intellect, intellect eventually develops and evolves into intuitive intelligence. And intuitive intelligence, in a way, it is a higher form of intellect. One that doesn't need step-by-step -step reasoning. It's very similar to instinct, right? How do many animals know? They just simply, certain instincts arise and they know. It's a kind of direct knowledge. Except in the case of instinct, it comes from the body. In terms of intuitive intelligence, it comes from another realm of the mind. Not so much to do with the instinctive mechanisms of the body. So, um, be careful not to jump to conclusions. Certain things may happen which have surprising effects, but we need to test it, put it to the test, experiment time and time again. And then you will know how to discriminate between your imagination and that which is real. <laughs>